I promised you all some benchmarks from our latest build featuring the i5 6600K from Intel Skylake lineup paired with a GTX 960 from EVGA. But I've decided to kill two birds with one stone here. You see, rather than forcing you all to watch two separate videos, one detailing just the benchmarks of our 6600K Skylake build, which is sitting right behind me, and the second covering a head-to-head clash-up between the i5 4690K from Haswell and the i5 6600K from the Skylake lineup, I'm just going to combine them both into one video. You guys probably want to see this more than anything anyway, right? Am I right? So, very quickly, under the test benches that we'll be using to benchmark both of these CPUs. In the Haswell corner for our 4690K, we paired it with an ASRock Z97 Extreme Port LGA1150 motherboard and two 4GB sticks of Ripjaws 5 DDR3 clocked at 2133MHz. I'm trying so hard to remember these exact specifications here. In the Skylake corner, we have the i5-6600K, of course, and we paired that with an MSI Z170A Gaming Pro motherboard and two 4GB sticks of a Vixer Blitz DDR4 that were originally clocked at 2800MHz, but that we've toned down to 2133 so that both of our RAM frequencies are exactly the same. It would also be good of me to note the fact that both of these CPUs are overclocked to the exact same 4.6 GHz with an NZXT Kraken X31. The Haswell chip, however, did require a slightly higher voltage than the Skylake counterpart to achieve that stable 4.6 GHz. So, without further ado, let's jump into our CPU synthetic tests first, and then we'll hop on over to the good stuff, the gaming benchmarks. So there you have it folks, our 6600K did manage to edge out a win in most of our benchmarks, the main exception being Dying Light, which for some reason still prefers Haswell-based CPUs over their Skylake counterparts. I really, I really don't know why. But even with that point in mind, the 6600K still is an improvement from Haswell, but does that marginal improvement justify completely rebuilding a PC from the ground up? Keep in mind that you can't use the exact same motherboards for both of these chips. This chipset is different than this chipset, and the motherboards required for both of these CPUs are completely different. So you'd have to scrap basically your entire platform, your motherboard, your RAM, and your chip in order to upgrade to Skylake. Is it worth it, even if these chips are exactly the same price where you live? Let me know in the comments below. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.